So the title of my talk is uh, Modeling and Analysis of Neural Communication Systems. Uh, my name is Lin Lin. I'm from Tongji University, China. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, my research group first. So Tongji University is located in Shanghai, China. And currently in my group, uh, there are four PhD students and nine master students. Mm, the main research interest is about molecular communication. Uh, in the past 10 years, we first focus on the theoretical work, theoretical research. We study the synchronization of molecular communication systems and mobile molecular communications. Uh, they are all funded by the NSF China. Uh, in recent years, we are also implementing experimental test beds. We have designed the DNA-based molecular communication platform. Uh, we are now implementing the uh, vascular molecular communication test beds. Uh, this work, we collaborate with China Mobile, which is the largest mobile network operator. <clears throat> so for this talk, this talk is about the neural communication systems. The research motivation about the neural communication, neural communication is like this. When we perform the research about molecular communication, uh, the most important scenario is the nano device in the human body. Uh, molecular communication is a communication technology for the data transmission among the nano devices. Uh, like nanorobots, nanosensors. So what is the next step? The next step of the research uh, would be transmitting data <clears throat> from the uh, nano devices in the human body to the outside human body. Uh, this is a very important issue. Well, we noticed that uh, the human nervous system is a natural communication system which realized uh, information transmission from the inside body to the outside body, and also from the outside body to the inside body. <clears throat> it can transmit information detected from the, skin, uh, from the receptors, uh, maybe skin, uh, to the central nervous system, uh, and transmit the control command from our central nervous system to muscle fibers or other organs for action response. So neural system might be a good solution to the delay sensitive application for the uh, through body communication. <clears throat> uh, however, most research uh, uh, on human nervous system is from physiology, biology, biomedical engineering. The studies from communication perspective is seldom. So for our recent research, uh, the research objective is for neural communication system. Uh, by studying the neural communication systems, we were better understanding the human nervous system from communication perspective. Uh, we will also pave the way for future engineered neural communication systems. <clears throat> so in this talk, we'll, uh, I will present our uh, latest research work about neural communication systems. One is about the modeling of the IONT interface system based on the neural communication system. Uh, the other one is about the multiplexing schemes for engineered neural, com neural communication systems. <clears throat> so the first, the, the first research work uh, is IRA performance on mutual information for IONT interface system. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we would like to study the communication techniques for data transmission, for data transmission between inside body and the outside body. Uh, wireless communication is a possible solution, uh, which is already used for uh, the wireless capsule endoscopy. Uh, it is a swallowable capsule, which can be swallowed by patients, and uh, it, ha it has camera, it can capture images uh, when it goes through the gastrointestine, the small intestine and large intestine. It uses radio transmission to set images from, to the outside body. So the frequency is 433 megahertz. But for uh, nano devices communication, uh, for nano device communication, wireless communication has difficulties like uh, radio and antenna size limitation, uh, EM wave absorption and attenuation, and the uh, biocompatibility issue. 
Uh, besides wireless communication, uh, uh, Felicity et al. propose fixing a probe in the blood vessel for the uh, data transmission through the human body. Uh, Tadashi's group proposed a uh, interactive display below the skin. Uh, Robert's group proposed transmitting signals from uh, by emitting magnetic particles, which can change uh, the current of the circuit, and then the data can be transmitted to the outside. So these ideas are very good, uh, but sometimes the techniques have their difficulties when applied to uh, the through body communication scenario. So our idea is like this. The nervous system is a natural communi uh, communication system for the through body data transmission. So we can utilize it to realize data transmission through the human body. <clears throat> so the nervous system is mainly composed of neurons to make better uh, to to make better use of neural pathways uh, we need to understand the mechanisms of neural communication first as shown uh, in the in the right figure a neuron is composed of three main parts uh, <clears throat> uh, dendrites uh, they receive signals from the previous neurons and transmit them to the soma the soma is also uh, called cell body, which uh, contains many organelles and the nucleus. And axon, it is, uh, it is a, a transmission channel of the action potential. Axon usually has multiple branches at the end, and each end has, uh, can expand to form a synapse. Axon is uh, exactly the structure that conveys signals to the next neuron, whereas the synapse is the structure uh, that converts electrical signals to into a chemical signals. So neural communication is in, is implemented by uh, mutual conversion of electrical and chemical signals. But only electrical impulse can be transmitted on a single neuron, whose land, uh, whose strength and speed are usually the, a constant. Uh, so the whole process of neuron uh, generation, the action potential is described uh, in the uh, uh, in the left figure. So this is the uh, signal. So the initial states is the resting states uh, in which the uh, sodium uh, potassium pump, uh, pumps, uh, potassium channels, sodium channels are all closed. So here A is the, uh, uh, is the sodium ion, B denotes the uh, potassium ion, and C denotes the voltage-gated voltage gate, uh, voltage sodium channel. <coughs> D is D is the uh, D is the voltage gate potassium channel, and E represents the sodium potassium pump. Since <coughs> the positive ions outside the membrane outside the membrane are much more than inside the membrane, so it is negatively charged inside the cell. The voltage difference between the two sides of the membrane is called the resting membrane potential, which is about minus seventy uh, millivolts. So the next state is depolar depolarization. When the membrane potential reach over the threshold, which is minus 55 millivolt under the action of st stimulus, the sodium channel, <coughs> the sodium channel uh, the will open and they allow sodium ions to come into the cell by passing through the uh, cell, mem cell membrane. Then the intracellular negative charges can be neutralized, which result in a net positive intracellular charge here. <clears throat> so the maximum membrane potential can reach 40 millivolts. The status, uh, so the next status is repolar repolarization. After peak membrane potential, the sodium channel closes and the potassium channel opens, <clears throat> allowing the potassium ions to flow into the extracellular fluid, then the membrane potential gradu gradually uh, decreases until it's, uh, it is below minus 70 millivolts and the uh, hyperpolarization process starts when the voltage will continue to drop down. So the last status is the refractory status. Uh, the sodium potassium pumps opens in this field, allowing the sodium and potassium ions to return to their resting state distribution inside and outside the membrane. Since there are lots of uh, so, uh, sodium and potassium channels on axon, so local current can trigger the adjacent channel. Uh, therefore, the APs, the action potentials, 
uh, are conveyed at, uh, to the end of the axon. When the uh, AP gets the synapses, the uh, vesicles start here and will uh, fuse, uh, diffuse with presynaptic membrane and re release neural uh, transmitters. These neural transmitters will bound the receptors on the postsynaptic neurons uh, after they diffuse through the synapses cleft. Through the process, the two uh, neurons can complete their transmission of the information. So this is the proposed interface system uh, framework for the communication process between the IONT nano devices and the outside process processing unit. Assuming the IONT uh, devices are, implant, are, are implant, implanted in the blood vessel, these nano machines communicate with the base station. Here's the base station. Uh, by molecular communication in a single hop or multi-hop manner, uh, the base station exactly uh, the only interface between the IONT and nervous system. It is responsible for uh, the integrating data from non devices in the IONT and convert the data to, uh, into nerve fiber stimuli in order to transmit signals to the outside human body. The base station uh, is deployed as close as possible to the nerve fiber uh, and they need to transmit signal to the, uh, and fix on the inner wall of the blood vessel Consider the base station is uh, connected to the uh, tiny wire with an electrode, small, small electrode, uh, to, simul to simulate the fiber. The electrode is directly connected to the fiber, no fiber, in order to avoid uh, affecting the important uh, activities of nervous system. So the nerves used to transmit should be skeletal muscle, uh, nerves that are not frequently used. Uh, because the, the afferent nerve uh, only transmit signals in one direction. So uh, the similar signals are not transmitted to the central nervous system, such as brains or spinal cords. Mm. So this part uh, represents the membrane structure of no bundles in the uh, peripheral nervous system. The electric current is delivered to the electrode and induced axon to generate APs. Next, the AP travel to the uh, neural muscle junctions uh, and cause the neural transmitters to be released from the synapse. And these neural transmitters can bound to the receptors on the postsynaptic muscle cell membrane. So the uh, muscle fiber contracts, which results in the change in the surface electromyography, which is short as, as EMG. So consider that there is external devices and that, that is attached to the skin surface. It can detect the SEMG signal easily uh, so to receive the signal. So we, we model the whole systems. We apply the OOK uh, modulation schemes at the base station and uh, uh, stimulant current sent by the base station is defined as AT, uh, uh, where AT denotes the electrical current uh, I's stimulus signal when B1 needs to be transmitted from the base station. Here, the stimulation current I can be any uh, microcurrent that uh, uh, physiology reasonable and can induce AP. Next, the uh, electric AT uh, is delivered to the neuron axon by a point electrode. Here, we ignore the effects caused by the nonlinear non factors. So the membrane potential V0 is defined as this one. Uh, since the nerve fiber in our system is myelinated, we adopt the myelinated cable equation, the membrane potential uh, of the nth node of Ranvier, which is the gap between the two myelin sheath, denoted as Vn. The relationship of the currents, that is the input current equals to the, uh, equals to the membrane current and the output current. We can use the relationship and differential equation to derive the cable equation. When the AP is transmitted from the last node end to the synapses at the end of axon, the synaptic vesicles in the presynapses may fuse with presynaptic membrane and release the neurotransmitter into the uh, cleft. The released neuro neuro neurotransmitter diffuse across the synapse cleft and finally bound with uh, the receptor in the muscle membrane. The heating probability is FT. Uh, when we define a uh, bounding amount of neurotransmitter as uh, QA, as QA, which is random variable, 
uh, bonding of neurotransmitter to receptor on the postsynaptic muscle membrane will cause the changes in muscle membrane potential. The muscle, uh, this membrane potential is called unplayed membrane potential, VEP, which is defined as this one. Uh, the VEP is the decisive factors affecting the off states of the voltage gate ion channels. These ion channels can cause the change in the membrane potential of the muscle fiber to generate the muscle APs, um, uh, VMU. Uh, which is the same as the principle of AP generated as the neural uh, neurons. This behavior can be expressed as this one. So the last is the S uh, EMG signal. No, it is used for decision for uh, decision making for X. So this is the uh, uh, numerical results. We plot the mutual information versus different parameters, including threshold, a diffusion coefficient, and symbol probability. So <clears throat> uh, we choose the uh, from these two figures, uh, we can see the relationship of the P and the coefficient, coefficient for different synapses mem membranes. We can see uh, <clears throat> uh, we can see the P decreases as the diffusion coefficient increases. This is because the increase of D leads to the increase of the heating probability Ft. Then the more neuro uh, uh, neurotransmitters will reach the postsynaptic membrane, pr producing a further larger uh, membrane potential VEP. So a larger VEP is more likely to trigger the muscle fiber AP, which will eventually generate the SEMG signal to allow the receiver to detect the signal. So then the uh, uh, mutual information also increases. Uh, so these two figures source the influence, source the influence of the threshold to the error probability and mutual information. So in the left figure, the impacts of the uh, threshold and the distance between the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane on the error probability is presented. It can be seen that from the curve, uh, the choice of the threshold has a great impact on the uh, performance of the system. When the other parameters are stable, there is a optimal decision threshold to make the system error probability uh, the lowest. However, the distance between the membrane determines the lowest part a possible level of system error probability. Mutual information with respect to the threshold also uh, investigated, which is shown in the uh, right figure. It shows that the opposite trends to the error probability. Uh, when, the, uh, when the appropriate threshold is selected, the error probability decreases where the mutual information increase with the decrease of the membrane distance. Uh, in, this, in, this, in these two figures, uh, the impact of the symbol probability distance of synaptic membrane and the number of molecules released on the mutual information is investigated. P0 means the symbol uh, probability for sending uh, P0. It is obvious that uh, the mutual information increases as the distance decreases. In addition, it can be seen from the right figure that when the number of uh, uh, neurotransmitter released by the uh, terminal, uh, increases, the error probability decreases, and the mutual information increase. We can also notice that the mutual information uh, curve is not symmetric. This is because for different distances, the optimal thresholds are different. So our second uh, work is about the multiplexing schemes for uh, neural communication systems. So multiplexing allows uh, sending multiple streams over data, uh, stream of data over a single neuron. It is useful for human nervous system. If in the future, the uh, IONT applications share the neural links to, trans to transmit data, multiplexing it would be necessary. Some research, workers, uh, some research works study neural multiplexing. Uh, one research found that the cortical neurons may encode the intensity of low contrast features into the rate of asynchronous spikes Whereas the high uh, contrast features are encoded by the timing of synchronous spikes, another research found that the oscillation, the oscillatory multiplexing st strategy of population codes, which express multiple stimulus attributes by oscillation modulation of the spatial distribution of firing rate in the neural ensemble. So our contribution here is that we propose a multiplexing and decoding strategy from uh, communication and signal processing perspective. 
for neural communication system based on the uh, single neuron channel. So this is a system model. Uh, TX1 and TX2 are two transmitters which contact directly with the neuron. And the neuron in the middle is the neuron channel which transmits the multiplex signals from transmitters. And uh, RX1 and RX2 are the two receivers. So the AP sequence evoked by uh, TX1 and TX2 are both represented as uh, data pulse string. Uh, this curve is for the signal transmitted. So these two signals uh, from the two transmitters are multiplexed in the same channel, and they will be uh, de multiplexed and decoded at the receiver. And at the receiver, there is a filter followed by a decoder. So for S1, T, and S2, uh, S2T, uh, they are transmitted signals. Uh, they are both pulse trained. For S1T, uh, we adopt temporal coding, which is consecutive pulse train. For S2T, we adopt the rate coding, uh, which means uh, in one bit interval, the pulse train follows Poisson distribution. And here, NT is the noise. Uh, neurons may generate spikes spontaneously, so the spontaneous spikes can be considered as the noise in the neural channel. It is always modeled as Poisson random process in neuroscience. Mm, it should also be noted that the generation of AP follows a all non principle, which states that the nerve fiber will always give a maximum response uh, and produce a spike of the same amplitude when stimulated. Even if the intensity of stimulus increases, the height of the spike always remains the same. Therefore, if uh, TX1 and TX1 noise happen, happens to generate spikes during the same slot, there will be only one spike generated with the same amplitude as other spikes. So this figure shows the amplitude uh, spectrum of two examples uh, of S1T and S2T without the DC component. It can be seen that uh, the main frequency of the components uh, of the spike uh, trains for S1T and S2T in different frequency bands, meaning that they can be separated from the frequency domain. It is known as when the neural a neurons generate spike, its membrane potential changes from negative uh, to positive. What is more, a real ne neural signal spike spurs contains high frequency membrane uh, potential oscillation. So uh, it should be a high frequency signal, whereas the sparse distributed spectrum uh, contains low frequency membrane oscillations. Thus, the essential, the essence of multiplexing through the two encoding method uh, is frequently de fre frequency division multiplex. And for uh, demultiplexing strategy, SM is received by both RX1 and RX2. The receivers uh, perform demultiplexing and decoding tasks. So, F, so for these two equations, F1 and F2 are filters for RX1 and RX, RX2 respectively. And H1K and H2K are the impulse response of the two filters that depends on the specific a design scheme. The kernel density function, uh, KDE, is used for decoding. Different from uh, simple counting and interval division of histogram, KDE weights and sums uh, other data around each center uh, sample according to the distance by convolving the data points with the kernel function. For spike firing rate estimation, the KDE method is convolving the spike train with the kernel function. Uh, to obtain the multiple kernel functions. Uh, next, uh, they are linearly superimposed to get a smooth estimation of firing rate. So this figure shows an example of decoding. The red curve uh, and the green curve are the KDE curves and the horizontal lines are the threshold. So these are the simulation results. This, uh, <clears throat> uh, so for, for, for this figure, uh, the probability of signing uh, bit one and bit zero are both 0 0.5, and the bit error rate is, sim is simulated when multiplexing channel when uh, and when not multiplexing respectively. From the figure, we can see that when only transmitting one sequence x1 with a spec burst, the bit error rate is extremely low. 
when only using the sparse post spec to encode the information, the BR is slightly greater than uh, use the spec bus. If two transmitters send signals simultaneously, the BER of both signals increase, increases uh, compared to when not complexing. In addition, the method uh, of encoding information with sparse uh, spikes is more sus sus susceptible to the influence of noise intensity and its BER becomes larger as the noise intensity becomes larger. So uh, for another figure, we can see that uh, the multiplexing slightly reduce the mutual information rate of each sequence. And uh, this is consistent with the conclusion that multiplexing increase the BER of the two signals. Uh, however, the total mutual information rate has increased significantly after the channel multiplexing as indicated by the top cur curve in the feature. Uh, in general, although it will uh, introduce some errors multiplexing, will still improve the transmission efficiency of the channel. So here is a summary. Uh, neural communication system can be used for through body communication transmission applications, especially for uh, delay sensitive applications. The framework of uh, the entire through body communication interface system is modeled and uh, multiplexing schemes for engineered communication system is proposed. Uh, the multiplexing, demultiplexing, and decoding schemes are presented. For future work, we will continue the theoretical research work on neural communication systems and collaborate with uh, the Tongji Medical School to perform the neural communication system experiments. Okay, thank you very much.